For the last few days I've been working with the new waveforms 3.6.8 that I mentioned in an earlier video. I'll show you that one in a second. Uh, there are two things in this new waveforms that uh, I found interesting. One was the inclusion of the spectrum analyzer in the script function, which I mentioned in an earlier video, and I want to uh, thank the uh, Attila at uh, Digilent. He had promised that this would happen uh, a few weeks ago, and sure enough, it did. So, uh, so kudos to uh, to Attila and Digilent for that. The other thing that I've been working with is a new feature in the waveform software called an impedance analyzer. And over here on the screen is an example. Now I'm not going to go into too much technical detail just yet, but I, the first part of this video is going to be of a description of the impedance analyzer, a little bit about how it works, and kind of my observations, a, a sort of a review or mini-review uh, found a few little uh, glitches here and there. Uh, we'll talk about those. But the main thing is I'm probably going to have to do two videos to get everything I want in. And I'd like to kind of wrap all this up because after uh, th these videos there's probably going to be a long gap. I'll try to finish up that uh, radio workbench series that I was doing. But with the fall uh, arriving, I suspect that uh, I know I've got a number of things that are going to occupy my time. So if you don't see any videos for a few weeks or who knows, uh, it's not that I've fallen ill or died, it's just that I've gone off to another place for quite a while. So uh, let me show you the uh, a couple of the earlier videos you might want to watch before you watch this one. Before I get to those videos, I did want to show you something that showed up on Digilent blog just this morning. It is an article on using the analog discovery and waveforms as a semiconductor curve tracer. And I had done a video on this uh, so a few weeks ago, and so if I confused some people or you'd like some additional background or whatever, I suggest you go over to the Digilent blog. This is the brand new, I think, uh, September on issue of the Digilent blog. At any rate, I just got it this morning, uh, but uh, you might look at that. The, uh, that particular video that I was speaking of is this one here, the Analog Discovery Curve Tracer that uh, I guess I posted about a month ago. But with regard to the, what I'm going to be doing the, this morning, there is a previous video called Transformers in Tube Circuits, and in that video, I used uh, a peak LCR meter to do some uh, studies of transformers, particularly how you can uh, measure the leakage inductance of transformers, like for output tubes and things like that. Also, earlier I mentioned the fact that I had done a video on the uh, new waveforms, the fact that it now contains script for the Spectrum Analyzer, and that's in this video called Analog Discovery Audio Analyzer Updates. The, uh, there is a uh, very nice uh, individual who has begun to work on using that function, I think in, some, in a Python program, I think he mentioned. At any rate, if you go over to the uh, Analog Discovery uh, Forum, you'll find and look for the uh, script in, or spectrum analyzer in script uh, line of uh, questions. You'll find that. And, uh, and once again, thanks to, uh, to Attila at uh, Digilent for 
adding that feature to the uh, waveform software. So okay, you might want to watch any or all of those before you watch this one, but now let me uh, get on with what I'm doing. Here is the help file for the new impedance analyzer that's present in the new version of waveforms for the Analog Discovery 2. You notice that there are two diagrams, two different setups. One is called load first and the other is called resistor first. We're going to concentrate initially on this one and I'll show you a slightly redrawn version of this in a minute that uh, may be a little, for beginners, might be a little easier to understand how to hook everything up. But one of the things that you will notice down in the lower portion here, you may not be able to read it yet, and we'll look at this a little more, is they have a capacitance column, an inductance column, and a resistor column. Notice that you have to have a resistor somewhere in the network. Now, in the resistor first, you put the resistor between scope 1 and scope 2 and the load to ground. In the load first, which is the one we're going to use initially, you put the load first and then the resistor from scope 2 to ground. But this is the resistor they're talking about. Now, it's fairly important that you get a, a resistor that's sized the right way. I haven't quite figured out the algorithm for how you determine the resistor, but uh, one thing I can tell you is that, for example, for reading large values of inductance, 10 ohms is a lot better than a kilo ohm, and 100 ohms is sort of in between. I haven't done capacitance yet. I've been doing some readings using uh, uh, fairly large inductors, things like uh, chokes for power supplies and output transformers for tube circuits, and it's the latter that I'm most interested in because what I would like to do is to use the impedance analyzer to check the characteristics of output transformers for tube amplifiers. And if, uh, like I say, if you haven't watched my earlier video on using the uh, an inductance meter to do that, you might want to watch that. There's a little bit of uh, background on that. At any rate, let's get on with looking at the actual hookup that I have and what I'm trying to do this morning. Here's the circuit I just showed you a minute ago in the uh, Digilent documentation, redrawn to show the additional connections. The They don't show the grounds, and I thought I'd stick those in. The uh, the scope inputs are differential inputs, so uh, you can't just hook one, one input, the other one will then be floating. So you have to hook one input to ground on each of the scope channels, and then you have to hook the other input to the scope, in the case of scope uh, channel 1, to waveform generator 1 and the component under test. This is what is called the load in the previous diagram. Then scope channel 2 is connected to the other end of that load and its other input is grounded. And then there is a resistor to ground from that point and this is the load first configuration. Now let's take a look at the circuit. Here is the actual circuit that I'm using. On the left is the analog discovery 2 and I suspect, uh, I have no reason to believe this won't work with the analog discovery 1, the original. I'm using the BNC adapter board just because I uh, find that using BNC connectors is convenient. In this particular case, I'm not doing any uh, anything special using the board. It's just a connect way of connecting to the analog discovery. Waveform uh, generator 1, which is this output, is looped back to scope input channel 1 here. Channel 1 is also connected to one end of the load, which is this little filament transformer. And then scope 2 is connected to the other side of the load, and there is a resistor. This resistance substitution box is being used for that resistor so that I can adjust it easily to known values. This is a 1% uh, substitution box. So the resistor values are fairly close to the, uh, the indicated value. So 
So what is it that I am getting? Well, one of the first things that I did was measure the inductance of that transformer. And by the way, the secondary is open. So it's just an inductor. I used the Peak Atlas LCR meter uh, to measure the inductance. And if you watched my previous video on uh, leakage inductance and output transformers, you'll, you'll be familiar with that. And the value I got was 34.6 millihenries. So now what I would like to do is show you the uh, results using the analog discovery. And but that will serve as a segue into the uh, use of this impedance analyzer. And here is the result I got with the waveform software and the analog discovery too. You'll notice, and I hope you'll pardon, I'm trying to do this off a computer screen, the the moiré pattern that you see there. But the it says that the series inductance is 34.98 millihenries, which comports very well with what I got with the Atlas uh, LCR meter. So far, so good. However, you'll notice that over here I have a resistor of 10 ohms that is uh, indicated. Now you can set that to other values. What I'm going to do is set that to 1K and I'm going to go over and change the substitution box so that it is using a 1K resistor. And now we're going to run it again. And you may notice that now the LS is 2.456 millihenries, way off. So I'm only showing you that to show that the resistor is, is uh, critical to getting good results here. And as I work with this, I'll try to work out a formula that will tell you how to uh, how to work with that. But in general, it looks like that you need a, a resistor that is in the same basic range as the analyzer at the frequency where it does that inductance measurement. In this case, the frequency is 123 0.2 kilohertz, I'll show you over here, right there, and it measures a, a resistance of 975 ohms. Remember, we're using a K here. So, uh, so as you see, it can be quite a ways off. Now, while I'm at it, and by the way, I should say, I, I really like this software and I like having the impedance analyzer, but there is, uh, well, there are a number of little anomalies and bugs and things. What I want to do is show you one of them. When you resize the window, I'm just going to drag this. Watch this little, this little wheel up here. And what it will do is it will, it will begin to cover these. In other words, the wheel seems to be tied to the side of the window. Now the wheel is intended, or the gear, is intended as uh, a way that you can set uh, the model and uh, and whether it uses an auto or uh, uh, inductance or capacitance model and so on, which we'll, we'll talk about at some point in the future. Right now I'm just talking about the user interface part of this. Now watch what happens as I begin to drag this in. You see it follows and covers up the stuff below it. So for example, if you have the window size to there, the gear is on top of what is shown below. And what is shown below does not seem to scale. So it's one of those things that uh, I, I don't, uh, I'm not complaining. Uh, I think it's great software, but it's one of those little bugs that they probably should work on. Either this information inside should scale with the window or the uh, when the gear is moving it should uh, perhaps black this out or whatever it's covering up. Anyway, uh, I'll leave that to uh, to Digilent. But, but it's pretty good software and I've been having a lot of fun with it. 
I will point out that I probably will do a part two for this one with a little bit more advanced experiments. Part one is just to introduce you to the impedance analyzer since it's a brand new function. So I'm going to do a brief overview of the analyzer, the impedance analyzer, and then I'll close out this video and we'll do some experiments in a part two that I will try to do as quickly as possible after this. The first thing that is of interest is this actually has two uh, modes. The mode that's shown here is the analyzer mode and that basically sweeps the frequency from a low uh, start to a stop. It also has a meter mode and the meter mode is very similar to uh, a typical LCR meter where for example you set the resistor as we've talked about in this case we're using 10 ohms and I'll talk a little more about that in a second uh, you set the frequency that you want to do the measurement and then uh, you, you of course have to decide whether or not the uh, you know the appropriate frequency and whether it's load first or uh, resistor first then you click on single and you get a measurement in this case 34.97 millihenries which corresponds very closely to what we got with the peak atlas which I have a lot of confidence in so but the additional thing is it gives you some additional readings it tells you what the actual impedance is at that frequency what the resistance that is the DC resistance is what the reactance that is the inductive reactance of course the frequency what the input phase and the output phase are what the dissipation is we won't talk about that but basically it's the amount of power loss in the circuit and then the quality or Q uh, most LCR meters at least the, the cheaper ones don't give you Q but it's a useful thing to have so that is the meter mode the analyzer mode sweeps from one frequency to another you start with the frequency in this box and in this case I have a kilohertz and the stop frequency is in this box 100 kilohertz now what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise this to the default value which is megahertz and run it and you'll notice over here that there's a bunch of red areas indicated and what it says is the resistance is too high there well it turns out 10 ohms is the smallest resistance you can use so another thing it's telling you is since you can't go below 10 ohms you probably shouldn't use frequencies above about 100 kilohertz for this particular inductor now of course remember this is a power transformer so it's not intended to operate above about 60 hertz but nonetheless what we're going to do now is we're going to reduce this to 100 kilohertz and run it again and you see within that range a kilohertz to 100 kilohertz it's uh, it works fine now what we're going to do is we're going to lower our lower frequency to we'll say 50 hertz and the reason we're going to do that is remember this transformer is intended to operate at 60 hertz which is, is going to be about in here and you see uh, we won't talk about this until we talk about the experiments but you can see that the frequency response is not uh, just a, a kind of smooth line it has some dips in it what these two lines are one of them the the, the wide dash is the resistive component the small dashes is the reactive component or X sub S the bottom trace shows the phase that is the, the phase angle okay let's do a little bit of a, an overview and a couple of little things that I have found one is I've already pointed out you can't use too high a frequency because to go above about 100 kilohertz with a power transformer like this you need a, 
an, a resistor or reference resistor, which is probably down around two to five ohms. And this, uh, at least the current configuration, won't allow you to go below that. By the way, I can't find a way to set a value either. Across the top, we've already looked at the meter and the analyzer, the two modes. It has the usual uh, file, control, view, and window functions that Waveforms has. I won't go into those. The uh, It has the decibel or phase and ohms. Notice phase and ohms here. Phase is, of course, phase in degrees, and ohms is the resistance or impedance. In this case, the uh, the graph of the resistive and inductive components. You can also do Siemens. That is, instead of doing uh, impedance, you can do admittance. I won't go into that. It will also measure Henry's, Farad's, dissipation and quality. We've already talked about those. Uh, a little bit. Henry, of course, is the standard or is the measurement unit for inductance. We've talked about the start and stop frequency. Amplitude, generally, this depends on the component you're using, but a volt is probably a good, reasonable figure. Uh, you don't want to use too high a value, particularly in a transformer, because if it's a step-up transformer and you're putting, say, 10 volts into the primary and it's a 100 to 1 uh, transformer, well that means that you're putting, you're generating a thousand volts on the secondary, which can be dangerous. So the resistor we've talked about, uh, compensation I won't get into, but to get extreme accuracy or better accuracy with this, you do need to compensate it, and perhaps we'll talk about that at some point in the future. Number of samples, you can set it to any value. I have found a hundred to be reasonably fast and accurate, uh, at least enough for uh, amateur uh, kinds of applications. Once again, we talked about the circuit configuration. You can do load first or resistor first. For now, we're going to stick with load first. And then over to the right are some of the measurements, the, impede the inductance, the resistance, the frequency, and so on. Basically, what's in this window is what is shown in the meter view over here. So you can switch back and forth between the two. And at this point, I think what I'm going to do is, uh, is pause here and wrap up part one and then move on to part two. So look forward for that. Uh, I'm hoping to do that within a day or so.